Good golly. Boeing got blasted. My gosh, what an awful earnings. But before we get into that, you know I had to talk about my spotlight stock of the week for earnings. Tractor Supply Company, baby. Beats on EPS standard by one cent. Revenue misses by 20 million, up 5.3%. Okay, mixed Q3. Tractor Supply Company up after comparable stores growth 2.9%. Everyday merchandise. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Gross margin increased. So SGA increased. Boom. Um, 25 new tractor supply stores. Hey, <clears throat> what else do you need to know? Good guidance. What can I say? That's all I could tell you. Told you to look at uh, Tractor Supply Company, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get into Boeing now. What really matters here. So, I mean, just look at that uh, EPS. I mean, it's it's not deniable that missing by 67 cents per share is a disaster. And obviously, there's a lot of reason for this, and I think this was pretty highly anticipated. So as a result, um, the company didn't get blasted. The stock price did not get blasted. Um, actually, if you take a look, uh, let's take a look at this stock for the past five days. Um, from reporting Wednesday after hours, actually up around 2%. So you wonder what in the world is going on there, right? How is that possible? Well, we'll get into that in just a second. We'll go over some of the numbers real quick. Um, but yes, huge miss in profit, um, for a company that's, you know, so long standing. And if you look at this revenue of inline, I mean, it is representing a 20% decrease year over year, but it was what was expected. So it's not awful, but it is awful in terms of that. I mean, 20% revenue decrease year over year, it's rough, um, even if it wasn't anticipated. Obviously, you want to see a beat in that aspect. You know, you want you want a better number than that. You don't want minus 20%, one-fifth of your business, you know. Um, and obviously here... Uh, Core operating earnings of one dollar forty five cents per share down fifty nine percent from a quarter a year ago. Yeah, rough. Um, lower seven thirty seven deliveries. Uh, let's see, revenue by segment. Commercial airplanes down sixty seven percent. That's gonna be the seven thirty seven max uh, dilemma. That's gonna be um, their issue there. Why they really didn't receive any sort of. Uh, they lost a lot. A lot of money in terms of that, a lot of profit, a lot of margin, a lot of revenue off the table due to the 736, 737 max debacle, which we'll get into. Um, the company's the regulatory approval of 737 max return to service will begin in the fourth quarter. Um, from what I saw, it looked like somewhere around uh, January is when they might get approval to start flying the 737 max again. Um, which would be huge for them. Obviously, it, it sucks to have a flight of airplanes that you literally cannot use. Um, I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? You spent all this money on producing these these high, heavy-duty uh, planes, and you're not even able to use them. They're all grounded. Uh, regulatory reasons, they're all grounded. You cannot use them, which makes sense. I mean, they cost two two crashes, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, operating cash flow of $2.4 billion, paid $1.2 billion in dividends. Uh, securities of 10.9 billion provide strong liquidity and you know we've talked about liquidity got to love liquidity it's all about liquidity liquid assets baby um so <clears throat> first off just off the the basis here sucky earnings but stocks up what's going on there so i'll just take a look uh if we're just looking at the stock as is um i think there are decent reasons for it Let's just look year to date here. Um, from March, I believe it was March when 7, 737 Max issue happened, um, which you can see on the graph here. Uh, so, I mean, the stock was riding high. So, let's just look a full year out. Um, things were riding high, and then since then, down 20%. I think a lot of this, this impact um, from the 737 Max is kind of built in um, or priced in. That's my perspective on the matter. 
and that's why I don't think the stock necessarily got hit. I think this is something that investors were certainly expecting. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious whenever you have to ground a, a set of jets, you're pretty well going to be losing out on good opportunities for revenue as well as profits because it's just wasted money at that point. Um, and you have to go through all that legal expense uh, for people settling claims. I mean, just think about all the expenses that come with with any sort of major traumatic accident like that. I mean, this company's you know paying out millions of dollars to people as a result of it, as they should. I mean, being so negligent in their their construction of a, of a jet. From my understanding, they knew um, engineers knew the, the issue with it. Uh, it just the design was not correct, um, and they still rushed it and, and pushed it through. And and this is kind of what happens. You pay the price for it. Um, but yeah, so that's my opinion on why the stock didn't really react negatively. I think it was mostly priced in, in my opinion, um, and people were really expecting it. Uh, and again, um, 737 max grounding cost nearly one billion dollars. Uh, so, as far as when that'll come back on, um, and this is a literally just now. So I mean, gotta love it. Not just now, but you know, yesterday. Uh, no worries there. Uh, we have a couple more things to look at. So, uh, so obviously, as we talk about with the max. Ex-Boeing pilot complained on management pressure on the MAX. Uh, former senior Boeing pilot Mark Forkner, Forkner hmm, complained years ago that he felt management pressured uh, pressure to ensure 737 MAX jets uh, would not require expensive pilot training. Eh, don't like that. I mean, you don't want a whistleblower like this. Um, that could be rough. Uh, obviously, this is still something that Boeing's going to be facing for a while. I mean, that's just a fact of the matter. I mean, people will dig into, especially the government, they're going to want their fair share of the money, right? They're going to want money. They're going to be um, probably looking in, you know, some sort of, of suit against um, against Boeing uh, for negligence. It, it's an absolute, absolutely potential thing that could happen in the future as they, they probe this. Um, and see what they want to do as a result of it because they will still be looking at it uh, for a while now. Um, certainly you can see, uh, as I talked about earlier with that uh, uh, government going after wanting the FTC to pursue um, Amazon for their the breach Capital One, I mean, that happened a year afterwards, you know, a year after they're just now, you know, pushing for this. You think about for Boeing, this is a lot more of a, you know, tragic occurrence technically. I mean, you know, these people lost their lives. Uh, this is something that could certainly be a huge pressure for Boeing. Um, absolutely could. Uh, we also have uh, Boeing Q3 could have been worse. So, again, this is some positivity, which is why I think there may have been a little bit uh, not as harsh results. Um Investors were pleased with a report that could have been worse. Again, I saw projections where they could have been halved in terms of their EPS of what they had. So this was only like a 59% decrease from year over year. I saw reports that said it would be a 100% decrease um, or it would be halved as opposed to, to what it was previously. So, again, could be worse. Um, could be worse. That's all I could tell you. <laughs> That that's a good way to say it. Could could have been worse. Um, if they want to think of it positively, didn't drop a lot of shell returns of the 730 Max return to service. Again, they just stuck with their timeline. Dividends untouched. Again, um, you know it's interesting if you're looking at their payout ratio. Uh, the pay, payout ratio is currently 87 percent, which is very high. Uh, I hate to say it, they're very high for this company. Um, company with a lot of debt right now, and they're going to be spending a lot of cash on legal occurrences. Um, they said their dividend is going to stay, but that probably means they're going to go into decent bit of debt in the meantime. I think it's going to be a rough couple of years for Boeing, um, and it, it's kind of the risk you play, you know, um, with major industry like this. You know, it could always happen. Um, <clears throat> drought orders from China, mostly tied to uh, China trade negotiations. 
okay, downside of production is 787, you know, uh, something to consider, free cash flow, much worse than expected at a negative $2.9 billion lost for the quarter, yeah, uh, 42 max jets are still built every month, mm-hmm, so again, this is really the reason, as I mentioned, for what this lost profit is, um, they're building these jets that they can't even make revenue off of, so it's literally nothing. Um, I mean, it's it's making your own arts and crafts just to keep it in your own house. You know, it's what's the point of starting your business and then you're you're not going to sell anything? You know, that's really the issue here. Um, we should really concern investors. However, it's an emerging picture. A company could. A company culture of cutting too many corners. John Sindro for Wall Street Journal. Okay. And again, that's fair. Uh, it's a, I think it's a fair opinion on the matter. They definitely cut corners with the with the max. Absolutely, they did. Uh, and there's no denying it. And you see the result of that. Um, and now Boeing's going to pay the result. So, again, we're going to get into the numbers now. But overall, before I get into that, just off of the immediate legal concern to consider, I'm stepping away from Boeing stock, and I would not. I'm not going to be involved with Boeing stock for the next. Uh, at, I mean, this is something they can file them for two years out at least. Um, I would stay, try to stray away from Boeing stock again, and there could be a dividend cut in their future depending on what exactly this legal concern comes to. I mean, if they're still stuck. Um, paying legal costs and the 737 max doesn't actually get ungrounded you know uh, it's a weird way of saying it. if they don't get to return to service um that could be huge for them i mean if they they set a january timeline but if they delay that even more as they investigate um i mean who, who knows how much money they could be losing just a scary stock for me to be in right now um so um Let's see, we'll go ahead and uh, return to service update, that's right, so they, they went ahead and, um, again, these are the two planes that crashed here, um, obviously tragic, tragic that, that people lost their lives uh, about this, but again, they're, they're really here just mentioning what they're doing to improve. Um, as a company, as well as what they're doing to to help these people and the families, uh, as a result of this, so they're really trying to work on uh, improving, um, and they have to because of this, obviously, which makes sense. Uh, strengthening the culture of safety, obviously, that's a huge factor there. Um, as we saw there with the previous pilot mentioning, there was concern for not enough training regarding the new jet. Uh, ugh, you know. I hate that. I hate that <laughs> something as skilled as flying a plane and we were pressured about not um, <laughs> not training them enough, you know? And again, um, just as a note of that too, again, whistleblowers aren't necessarily always telling factual information, just, just as a factor that, to consider. Uh, but continued uh, to engage global regulators and customers on 730 Max, safe return to service. Revenue of twenty billion core uh, earnings per share of dollar forty five cents as we saw. Uh, recorded operating cash flow of that's right negative two point four billion. Paid one point two div bil one point two billion in dividends. Ugh, that's rough. Um, that's rough. That's for sure. Delivered sixty two commercial airplanes. Won key defense space awards. Um, Again, you saw their space and defense uh, category was increased uh, year over year, so that was a positive note for them at least. Uh, commercial aviation remains long-term growth industry. Um, they're looking to get to 44,040 planes. Interesting number. I, I see they obviously probably have a good reason for that. Uh, healthy airline industry. Uh, profitability that's a good thing they obviously want they need profitability at this point their company is losing you know they're getting to a point where they're making a lot less money in terms of profit um, and they're declining revenue pretty steadily too uh, growth opportunities over a 10-year period um, three trillion dollar services market 
just some of what they're they're trying to target there uh, to try to grow in some revenue. Obviously, if you look year over year, uh, both in revenue, I mean, one fifth of the business cut down. That's twenty percent, as we saw, and earnings per share, ooh, rough, 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 rough. That's ugly, 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 ugly. Uh, focused on return of the seven thirty seven max. Um, again, pfft, interesting stuff here. Um, obviously they said weak, weak in terms of, uh, Chinese ordering of the 787, uh, 787 is kind of their, their push forward here. As you see right here, uh, is the 787. Um, and if they're getting weak in terms of that, 777 X is on track for the first flight in early 2020, their newest plane. Um, we'll see how that goes. Capture new and follow, uh, follow on business. Well positioned for the future. Um, are you? It's interesting to say. Um, but this is as far as defense and space, uh, which again, this is an area in which they did improve on uh, in terms of defense and, and space. Um, backlog of sixty-two billion dollars headed their way, uh, and that's over you know years worth of time. Um, here's the T seven A Red Hawk, as you see. Beautiful looking looking plane. Um, I'd love to love to fly that thing, but uh, I am not in the Air Force. Sorry. Um, award a contract with the U.S. Air Force, providing F-15 training in Qatar. Um, select selected by the U.S. Air Force for the A-10 Thunderbolt two rewinging contract. Gotta love it. I love a nice Thunderbolt. Um, look at this guy. Look at this guy. That's a good looking plane. Um, signed agreement with Indigo for digital solutions and secured KC 46A Tanker Lot 5 services contract. Again, contract services is really where they're looking to go ahead and make some of that extra money. A backlog of $21 billion here as well. Uh, cash flow. Look at this. <laughs> Let's forget about that. That's rough. Um, cash flow is looking rough. Look at this increase in debt. Uh, obviously good credit rating though as you see uh, Moody's A2 um, S&P 5 S&P A and then Fitch A so they have a good credit rating at least that is a thing to consider with this debt um, obviously you want to have a good credit rate which I haven't talked about previously we can talk about that another time as far as credit rating is concerned so again 10 billion dollars in cash or 11 billion dollars in cash versus 23 billion in debt it is a concern. Um, it is a concern going forward. And that is really all we have in terms of the slides that they posted. Again, I say, uh, I'd say stick away from Boeing for the next little while. Um, at least don't buy into it. If you're holding for a dividend, I understand. Um, but if you're up on the position, I might consider getting out. The stock's going to trade stagnant. I'm just going to say that as is. And there's a chance for a dividend cut. Um, we obviously need to see how things go in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of legal proceedings from here. I think there's going to be a huge, huge uh, price to pay. And there's no denying it uh, as far as what they've done. They've already lost a lot of money in terms of the 37, 737 max. And they will continue to lose a lot of money in terms of it. So we will see how that goes. Um, yeah, again, I, I'm not buying the stock, and I think valuation is a little rich on it as is. Um, P.E. ratio, I mean, already is somewhere around 50 at this valuation, uh, and, and that should, you know, forward P.E. should go up as, as a result of this um, decrease in earnings per share. So I think valuation isn't really justified right now. So I would, I would not buy into the stock at these levels at least. That's my opinion on the matter. Hope you enjoyed.